Hey guys, up it's Jake, and today we are gonna have our very first uh, Microsoft Visual Studio tutorial. Uh, we're gonna be programming in Visual Basic. Uh, this is mainly for everybody in my class at ECC 102. Shout out, what's up? All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to open Visual Studio, and to open Visual Studio, you can either go down to your Start menu and All Programs. Microsoft Visual Studio 10 and then just click on the Microsoft Visual Studio 10 um, But what I like to do is I actually right click on this and I pin everything To my taskbar as you can see down here. It's always stuck down at my taskbar So that's just a little tip for you guys is to pin it to your taskbar and you can always just go like this then you can just go down and click it and always be there All right, So when you open it up, this is gonna be the first page that it gives you and basically there's not really much to do on this page. Uh, most of this is just kind of a tour around Visual Studio just to get you a little bit familiar with it. Uh, but you won't need to worry about that. So you're just going to go down to New Project. And the first thing you're going to notice is all of these menus over here. Uh, for our purposes, we're only going to be doing a Visual Basic. And then we're going to go over here into this right pane. And we're going to go Windows Form Application. You always want to name your Windows applications. Um, if you leave it Windows Application 1, it's just going to look unprofessional. So, um, I don't know. Let's just make this tutorial program for now. And notice on your screen, it could have two more boxes here. Um, down right where it says tutorial program right here, there might be two more text boxes. Um, that is just so that you know where to save it, but I'm going to go over saving in just a second here. So let's press OK and we'll get into the interface. All right, so what you have here is your interface, and your guys' is, is going to look just like this. And the first thing I always do, and I'll explain this in a minute, is come over here, click on the toolbox, and immediately hit this auto-hide button up here, which will change it from auto-hide to pinned. So this will always be over here, because it's kind of annoying to have to click the toolbox every time you want to put an object or a control on the Windows form. So I always make sure that my toolbox is pinned, and... Another tip, if you ever move anything around or like this stuff gets all jumbled or you know like this stuff, it's just everything gets messed up, you can always go up to window and reset window layout and then just click yes and everything will go right back to where it was and you can just go ahead to your toolbox and pin that again and now this is saved so next time you open you don't have to save this window layout it'll just come up right as it is right now. Alright so let's go over what you see here real quick. Over here we have our toolbox, which I just showed you guys pinned, but now I'm going to explain it a little bit. The toolbox is basically a list of every single object or control, they're called both things, that you can put on these Windows Form objects. So for example, um, if I wanted a button, you just go over here, and you take the button, you click on it, and you drag it onto your form, and it creates a button for you. Now, a button is an object or control, that's what any of these are, I'm really going to stress that just because it's, it's pretty important. Um, you can have labels, so this is your text that you want. Um, you can do some text boxes, so this is you're gonna type in these, you're gonna show information with these, and you're gonna usually um, code information with your buttons typically. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this real quick. And now, oh, I should go over that. To delete an object, you can either click on it, press delete. Uh, that's the easiest way. Obviously, it's just click on it and delete. Or if you have multiple ones, like say I have two buttons, uh, you can just highlight them all like that and just delete them. Alright, so moving on, this is your design window that we have up here right now. As you can see up here, it'll give you your little hint, it says design. And right now, we don't have a name for our form yet, so it says form1.vb design. And if you notice, if you accidentally ever double click, so let's say I double click on my form. This is going to bring up what is called the code. So now, all this code is what you're eventually going to write to make sure that a program works. And all of this will be eventually filled in by tons of pages of code, and uh, it'll get progressively bigger and larger. But now, to switch back to your design, you can just switch these tabs just like you're using a, uh, an internet browser. So it just goes right between these tabs. Alright, so I'm just going to exit out of this code because we're not going to need that. The next thing I want to go over is... Uh, the right side of the window here. Right now you have your Solution Explorer, your Team Explorer, and your Properties down here. 
the team explorer you are rarely going to use um it's it, it's really like advanced stuff that you don't really necessarily have to pay attention i don't even pay attention to it um and your solution explorer is it's not insanely um critical but it shows you everything you have all the forms you have it shows you your project files so it's nice to have it here so i always keep it there and then down here you have your properties so let's say i click this form and to click on any object or control so say i have a label over here just click on it and it'll bring up the properties over here so let's say right now i'm clicked on this label and right now it's label one and you can go down and you can scroll through all of these so we got some back color so you can change the color so there you see the color change behind it um, you can change your borders this is all stuff you just got to kind of mess around with it's pretty familiar and down here is your font option for the font option you always want to click on the font and then go over to this little ellipse and it'll bring up a whole selection of all the fonts all the sizes and everything that you can use to create your labels now I just want to say the typical uh, recommended Windows 7 font is actually Sego what is it Sego UI I think and uh, it's gonna be size 9 so let's see if I can find that real quick there we go so Sego UI and it's gonna be size 9 so just uh, just for curiosity reasons and then you just keep scrolling down and you can see some of these have size so like right here I could change this size I could put it to uh, I don't know 100 by 50 which I, can't, I actually can't do because it's a text option but um so let's do it on the form you can go into the form go down to size and I'm gonna change the size of the form by just manually entering an X and a Y so that just created a bigger form so now my form is 500 pixels by 500 pixels and you also have the text option down here now the text option and the name option that we saw earlier at the top are the two most important you always want to make sure that you change the text and the name of every object you have. So for this form, um, let's call it um, let's call it tutorial form. And at the top here, watch this. When I press enter, it changes the text up here. So that's why it's important. If you want to make a application, you don't want it to come up saying form one. You want it to say something that means something that's relevant to the program. So now let's go up and change the name. Now, the name isn't going to physically change anything, but when you get into your coding, the name is going to make the biggest difference you can imagine. So we're going to go ahead, and we're just going to name this, and I'm using the prefixes. We'll go over the prefixes eventually, so I wouldn't worry about it now. But we're just going to call this form tutorial. And then, so now this is, uh, this is it. So now if I double-click this, you notice that it says form one load. But that's just because I didn't change it before I had double-clicked it originally. So if I delete the code that I had brought up originally, I can double-click it, and now it's changed. So you always want to make sure that all these lines and all these names in your code is always lined up. But we'll get to that in probably a couple tutorials. So other than that, guys, it's pretty much um, what I would do is just play around with this stuff. So like, let's take a picture box, put a picture there. Uh, you can take a label and put a title on this. So let's just change the text real quick to title. And we'll just put that title up there somewhere. And then uh, let's put a uh, just a one button down here. We'll make this just a little exit button. I'm not going to code any of this right now, but just so you guys get the hang of it. So there you go. So you can create forms just like this. You can just resize this also by manually just clicking the sizing handles on the side. Uh, you can do that for anything. There will always be sizing handles even for buttons see accident all right see there's a good point I accidentally clicked right there so you see it brings up the code for my button so I don't want any of this right now because we're not gonna code anything but you can see that if you accidentally double click just make sure you go ahead and just select your other tab back in your design so you can change everything around and you guys can really just mess with this how you want um, the one big thing is uh, just mess around with it and try and make it so that something looks good so like that size of an exit button it looks pretty good um, I like that size of a picture and let's just keep that title size um, just for the fact of you want to eliminate as much empty space as possible so say I only had these three things there, well there's no need for the form to be that big so I can just go up here bring this down a little bit let's put that title over put this button over 
and now you can make this form just that big. So that's one of the most important things. If you have a form that has these objects on it, but you have a form this big, there's no point in that because it's just going to distract from the attention of the user of the application. So you always just want to make sure that everything you do is appropriately sized and um, relevant to anything that has to do with your program. That's going to be it for today, guys. Um, oh, really quick, let's go over saving. Uh, the easiest way to save in Visual Basic is definitely the Save All feature. So you can either go File, Save All. You can go up to this little three disc icon up here, or you can press Control Shift S. I always use Control Shift S just because I uh, I like my keyboard shortcuts. And now here's the most important part: is you're gonna want to name your uh, program, then you're gonna name your solution. So usually you're gonna go and change the name of that solution to um, something that has like, so my name is tutorial program, so my solution is going to be tutorial solution. And you're just going to browse to wherever you want it. So let's say I want this just on my desktop. Um, and let's go into my computer and put this in one of my drives. And we're just going to select this. And now here's where it's going. So you need to make sure that this is always going correctly where you want to. And then you just simply press save. And the important thing with save all is that you have to make sure that you use it because that saves everything. Sometimes you can make changes, and if you just press save, it doesn't save it because it's not um, registering which changes you want saved. So your best bet is always just use save all. It's not going to take any more time. It's not going to take any more space. It is just the most effective and best way to save any program in Visual Studio. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and go file and just exit out of this program. And I don't want to save any of the changes, so I'm going to press no. And we're just going to exit out here. I will see you guys in the next tutorial. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope you guys learned something. And uh, next time, we will get into making an or making a uh, Windows form with some pictures. And we'll maybe uh, do a little bit of coding. So thanks, guys. I'll see you later.